the Tune of the Month and happy September! I'm Mari Black and this month I have for you, by popular request, uh, an original tune of mine. This is actually a tune that I wrote earlier this summer for the students at the wonderful Acadia Trad Festival. It's an amazing music and dance camp up in Bar Harbor, Maine that I actually now co-direct. And I wrote this tune um, to celebrate us all coming back together in music and it's become a little bit of a mascot tune. So I thought I'd show it here in case any of you would like to learn it and join in the joy as well. It's called Acadia Dawn and it goes like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. this is a real in 4-4, four four, and you maybe even have figured out that it's in D major, two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. And I'm sure you heard that like most traditional fiddle tunes, it's in two sections, A and B, and that within each section, here comes your good learning by ear skills. Did you notice that it follows that wonderfully familiar formula within the section? There's a part one, the little theme, part two is the answer, part one comes back, and then there's an ending that's all within the A section, B section does the same thing. So it makes it really friendly to learn. <laughs> and you also may have noticed that, you know, the name of the tune is Acadia Dawn. I was thinking about the sunrise um, and uh, the, you know, rebirth and all these wonderful things that go with that idea. And so you notice probably that the A section is lower in the register of the instrument and then the B section grows up higher, just like painting the sunrise in music. At least that was the idea. So let's start out with that A section. You'll need your lower register in D major. So I have my lowest possible D chord on the violin. There's my root and my lower fifth is here. A lot of that. All right, I'm gonna play through the A section slowly twice so you can hear how it goes. And I'm gonna take out the ornaments so it's just pure melody, real easy to hear. See how much you can pick up. One, two, three. rewind the video and play it along with me slowly. You could piece this together totally by ear without me saying a word. That's always the goal, learning these traditional tunes by ear. So go ahead and try it. Rewind the video, play with me, see how much you can pick up. Maybe you get the whole section that way. But if it helps you to have the parts broken down a little bit more, well, that's what I'm here for as well. So let's do that now. 
All right, so part one is going to start with two pickups. Going down to that low fifth of the D chord. Here's the root and the fifth is the downbeat. So we are down bow there. We're always trying to be down bow on down beats as per usual. Ready? Part one. One, two, three, two pickups. And go one. We'll know all about that one, or maybe just not even from tune of the month, from your regular fiddle life. Whenever we have a quarter note in a reel, right, one of the long notes, the if we just keep bowing as it comes, it will end up backwards bow, up bow in the downbeat. Not so comfy. So whenever you have a quarter note, like right here, we're gonna slur the next two eighth notes to stay back, down bow on the downbeat. Go do it with me, too. Three pickups. Down. Here's your long slur down. Good. One more time. Part one, two, three. Good. Feeling okay, part one? If you need any more repetitions, just rewind the video. I'll practice with you as many times as you like. But right now I'm going on to part two. We've just landed down bow here. Now, what you just finished part one with, that little walk up, it's sort of like a scale that's missing the third finger if you're playing fiddle or viola, right? Little scale with a hole in it. Part two is gonna start with the exact same run. It restates itself. Just two pickups first that are gonna slur up bow. So here are my pickups. Restate. Yeah, check out that part two. Two pickups and a restatement. So when you get to that G note, it's just a little bit higher than anywhere we've gone before. We're painting the sunrise, remember? So every time we get to go just a little bit higher in pitch, it's like the sun cresting over the horizon, right? That's a special moment in the tune. At least I designed it to be. So let's try it. Part two, two pickups. Here's our restatement. top is also a quarter note, so you could bow it long, slow, right? And that works great. I'm using even another option that helps lean into that G note, that, that crest of the sunrise again. I'm using a three plus one bowing. One, two, three, and seven. See that? Long slur will also work so long as you're back down bow on the down beat. You can pick which bowing is most comfortable for you and that you like the sound of. All right, try it again, part two with two pickups. Two, three. We're now, we've already landed back ready for part one again. No pickups this time. A little variation. Yeah, so technically it's a part one prime, a little tiny part one variation. Only at the end of it. First part's exactly like we'd expect. Here's our low fifth to the root, just like the beginning, long, now here, 
that tail is a little interesting. Notice where the sun is coming up a little higher. We now have the A note, right? A little D major arpeggio across. And then I'm going to slur down the scale to kind of glide out of it. Hey, right? try part one prime. but super effective. More repetitions, just rewind. I'm going on where we just landed at the end of the scale. That's the downbeat of the ending, and it goes like this. And if that sounds unusual to you, uh, it is, it's kind of a cool sound. It's a pentatonic scale. So again, a scale with a hole in it is the way to think about it. And the hole here is the second finger. We're not going to use the second finger. So open one, three, open one, three, we'll do it. And then here, you do need that second finger when you come back down. So notice now the sun is really coming up over the horizon here at the ending. Let's do it. Ending pentatonic. Back, down. And notice I am scooping that ending. I'm slurring up bow, so I finish up bow. Scoop up. And then we'll be ready for pickups down bow at the beginning. Try that ending again, the pentatonic. Three, four. section. You ready to put everything together? Go to the beginning. We got two pickups going down bow. One, two, three, part one. Part two, restate it. out the mini section. Second time I shut up and I left it for you. Were you calling out the sections? Did you know what was next? To think about that roadmap. Think ahead. Oh, part two is coming. That's the part where the first crest over the horizon, right? The sunrise. It's an easy way to kind of remember <laughs> what's coming next in the tune. But yeah, the more you think ahead, the easier it is to play. If you'd like some more repetitions on that A section, just go ahead and rewind. But we are going on to the B section. Now, to get there, Obviously, the ending of the A section has to change a little bit, right? Because as it's written already, the A section goes way above the horizon and then comes back down to the beginning of the dawn, right? And then we got to come back down, which we use a, a five chord for that, if you're interested in your arpeggios, an A arpeggio. Um, okay, so... The B section, though, if you may remember from the beginning of this video, is up high. So we got to get there. How do we do it? 
same pentatonic. <laughs> But then, rather than going back down the arpeggio, go up. And there's the moment where the sun fully comes up over the horizon. You hear it's just a big scale, but pretty effectively placed, if I do say so myself. So easy to play. Such an effective moment. Let's try that. This is the ending of the A section going into the B. Ready? Pentatonic. Go to your A, now up the scale, keep going, keep going, and we land there, that's the start of the B section, nice, do it again, pentatonic ending of the A. Ready, big sunrise, sunrise, ta-da, and we've just landed on the B section, I'm going to play two Bs slowly. See if you can notice where's part one, where's part two. How much can you pick up by ear with me right now? Two, three, right on it. B section, one. say that without sounding like I'm bragging about my tune because this kind of came to me fully formed. I didn't really figure it out. It just I knew I wanted to play something that sounded like this. And it's so friendly and it's so fun. Did you already find the patterns? Let's do part one. No pickups because they're already there in the whole big scale. So we go right on the downbeat. Long slur, smoothie, smoothie. Ready? And D major chord. major arpeggio. So I like to think about if, if I'm playing arpeggios, you know from Tune of the Month, uh, those of you who hung around for a while, I have my hand in teams. This is my odds team, fingers one and three, and my evens team open two and four. If I'm playing an arpeggio, I stay in the same team, as long as I'm in the same octave. Here, root third, fifth, it's all odds teams, all ones and threes. until I land on the new chord, right? So this is the fifth. Hop to the root. Back to the fifth. Down the scale. And now here's the fun part. It's a little shuffle there for a second, right? Again, part one, right on the downbeat. Three, four, long, slur, hop across. And our pleasure. Root, third, fifth, root, fifth. One more for good measure. Three, four, D chord. you know what to do. Rewind. Sure hope this is rewind the way uh, it fits on your YouTube screen. Otherwise, I look very silly. Is it that way? You know what to do. Here we go. Part two is the same idea, but now on an E minor chord. Good. Give it a try. Long Catch 
matching those patterns. Try it again. E minor chord. Yeah, are you sounding it out, figuring out where those pitches are on your instrument? You can also figure it out. Think about those patterns, right? I'm starting on the third of my E minor chord, the long is a lower neighbor tone. La, sla. Now I have an E minor arpeggio. With a little scale passing tone there. La, neighbor tone. E minor. And now here. I'm back to where I've been anchoring, right, on that third. Skip up. Walk back down. And now here are baked in pickups to part one. Up the scale to the D chord. All right, so if I'm figuring out what the patterns are, that's what they are. Try it, part two, you can sound it out or figure it out your choice. Long, slow, E minor. Good, we're back to part one, do it, D chord. It's on the third of the E minor chord with our little neighbor tongue. Hop all four down. Down the scale. And my favorite part, are you ready for this? It's going to be stuck in your head for the rest of your life. Now these are little step downs. They appear in tunes all the time. And you know what it sounds like? Technically it's just down the scale, right? Hot, cross, buns, right? Hot, cross, buns, where the buns is your D because we're going back home to the root. But if we want to decorate it, each of those notes gets a little step above it. Hot, cross, buns. And then it sounds like beauty and the beast. And I watch you groan through space and time. I can tell it like, oh no, I'll never forget that. Good. It appears in so many tunes when you have those little step downs. It's Beauty and the Beast. And now you'll never miss that ending. <laughs> Let's do the whole ending. Starts here on the E minor chord with a neighbor tone. All four fingers down and go down the scale. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, and when you put, I'm sorry, I'm talking string language. When I say all four fingers down, some of you might be playing accordion or flute or whatever, but you know what the deal is. Go up to the high B and then down the scale. Here we go, ending. Neighbor tone. Starting up on that fifth, the high A. Two, three, no pickups, and long, slur. Part two, E minor. Back to part one. I didn't really show it to you, but it fix, uh, fits really well. If I finish beauty and the beast, and I want to get back to the beginning of the beast, 
section, I just go up the scale. Anytime you want to get to the B section, go up a great big scale. It's the sunrise. Hey, nice job, folks. Go ahead and rewind if you want some more repetitions of two Bs together. Um, but that's basically the whole tune. That's the, yeah, that is the whole tune. Two A is two Bs. And that's that. Now, here's the fun part. You can totally play it just like we just did. Um, you need the little ending of the A section. If you're going back to the A, it comes down. If you're going on to the B, it goes, continues up the scale, right? Now, when I play Katie Don with my fellow directors of Acadia Trad School and others, we layer in some extra things, right? This is a tune that can be stacked with all sorts of subtle and, and not difficult little frills. So it suddenly sounds very fancy. And you probably heard it when I played it through at the beginning of the video here sounded pretty fancy and i'm going to show you a couple of those things now in case you want to spruce it up even more the tune's pretty good just by itself but a little sprucing can be good so the first big sprucing tool that actually covers most of the tune is anytime we have those quarter notes quarter know this from the rest of your fiddle life or from previous tunes of the month but let's do it here too because it's so effective any quarter note can become a cut which is a bow ornament a triplet bow ornament are you trying it with me part two part one cut just like when you play the quarter note that you have to slur the next two same is true for cuts anytime you play a cut the cut starts down bow one two three and you slur -er the next two eighth notes whatever they are otherwise you'll end up backwards bow aka unhappy all right so yeah anytime you want to put in the cut triplet you totally can and we just played with putting one on the beginning part of each little section, part one, part two, part one, ending in the B section. All right, so that's a whole layer of fancy. And you don't have to cut every one. You could do some as a quarter note and some as a cut and alternate. We've played around with this in past tunes of the month. Maybe pause the video right now and play around with that. Play two Bs and choose which ones you want to cut and which you want to quarter note and switch them around. Okay, unpause the video. If you didn't pause, you, you experimented in your soul, if not in actual reality. Okay, so let's go another layer. What if I wanted a fancy on the beginnings of each of those parts, but I didn't want to cut all four? Hmm. There's another thing I could do with a quarter note, and that is to make it a slurred triplet. So... I like neighbor tones and it can be upper or lower so I was using an upper on part one and notice here I could do slur the triplet down bow and then slur two just like the the um, usual quarter note or cut but it gets a little even so I'm actually using that bowing we talked about back in the A section a three plus one a longer slur and it leans more into the triplet <laughs> 
<laughs> Try it. Lean your bow down and now we're separate. Let's try this one on the lower neighbor. I'm sorry, an upper neighbor. Upper. Try it again. Lean your bow. Lean your bow down. You got it? Here. Lean your bow down and How's it feeling? Pretty fun, isn't it? Just as fancy as the cut, but a totally different vibe. The cut has kind of a spring, like a, um, a pixie dust. Da -da 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 -da. Rapid fire, energizing. And then the triplet, if you do that lean your bow down and set the three plus one bowing, that has like a sliding into home plate sort of feel. So, of course, we'd mix them up, wouldn't we? Now, when I'm playing the tune by myself, I spontaneously mix around. We now have three options. Quarter note by itself, very effective, especially if you're mixing it with other fancies. The cut, and the lean triplet. Yeah, da, 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 da. And I would spontaneously switch it around and see what feels good. In fact, pause the video and play with that right now. Okay, I pause. And um, okay, so when I do it by myself, I do what you just did, in spirit if not in actuality. Now, when I performed this tune with my fellow directors at the Acadia Trad Festival, we actually arranged it with harmony. We did some twin fiddles, and um, so we wanted to match. So we made a plan so that we would do the same thing each time all together and sound really synchronized, right? So what we decided was that every part one we were going to cut, and every part two and ending we were going to lean triple it. Let's try that, just for funsies. Do it like the directors did. Uh, and let's actually go, let's, for funsies, let's go from the pentatonic end of the A, going into the B, right? Remember that guy? Two, three, M. Up the scale, ready to cut. Part one is cut. Ready? Triplet. Part two is a triplet. Lean your bow down. Part one is a cut. Ending is a triplet. Beauty and a B. Same thing on the repeat. Cut. alternate them. I had a little goof there that'll teach me to talk and play at the same time. <clears throat> but you get the idea. So you could follow the director's arrangement there or better yet, mix it up on your own. And that gives you a lot of options there in that B section. So every sec every time you repeat the B section it could be a little different and a little more fun to explore the top of the seven. Okay, I'll show you how you might apply that to the A section because we got a lot of those quarter notes there too. <laughs> When the Acadia directors play this tune, we like to cut the very first. We put in a little extra cut there. Try with me again. 
again. Down bow, cut your bow up. Remember we said it's a bowing convention. Whenever you cut, the cut goes down bow, and you slur the next two eighth notes, no matter what they are, to make sure that your bow is still down bow on the downbeat. This place is a very good example of where the sl that slur, the recovery slur, is already there for you because that's a quarter note. Check it out. Quarter, I'm already ready. So I do not slur these two pickups anymore. Does that make sense? Really, really, really important. The quarter note counts for the two eighth notes slurred up. Down, up, cut your bow up, down, up, down. Does that make sense? It's an important extension of the cut bowing convention, right? It, it's not mindlessly slur the next two things. It's slur the next two eighth notes to recover and make sure you're still down bow on the down. Does that make sense? So we like to do that in the A section. When the directors did our arrangement, we didn't add anything extra beyond that to the playing of the A section because that's kind of the lower, um, chiller, pre-dawn kind of things. Although if you wanted to, you could certainly put in some lean triplets. There's one kind of waiting for you in part two. <laughs> your fourth finger right because we're using that leaning bowing already so you can play around with that I don't do that much myself but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea if you like it you should do it all right so basically there's are lots of little toys you can play with to help make the sunrise even more frilly and wonderful and uh, fun to play and these tricks will work, of course, in lots of other tunes besides Acadia Dawn. So I encourage you to go to other tunes that have similar structures, have little quarter notes, and see, could you make it a cut? Could you make it a leaning triplet? And how uh, lacy and frilly can that make your playing of it? All right, and I hope you also learn Acadia Dawn and come play it with us at the Acadia Trad School up in Bar Harbor. It's always the last week of June and uh, all instruments and, uh, well, nearly all instruments, uh, trad instruments and dance and uh it's a total blast so learn the tune come play with us in bar harbor and stick around for more tunes right here on the internet next month thanks guys see you soon <laughs>